Hi everyone, welcome back. Now in this session, we're actually going to see how to price forwards and futures when we actually have any dividends that we're actually going to receive between today and end of the forward contract. In the previous session, we actually assumed that there is actually no dividend that we're going to receive between t equal to zero and t equal to three. We're now breaking that assumption and we will actually assume that this stock is going to actually pay us some dividend between time equal to zero and time equal to three, which is nothing but the maturity of the forward contract. Now dividends can actually be expressed in two, two, two forms. One, you can have something called as discrete dividends, wherein the dividend amount is actually going to be specified to you. And you're also going to be specified with how much, uh, with when you're actually going to receive it. For example, in this case, maybe the question will state that you are going to receive rupees 10 as dividend at t equal to two. This is actually a case of discrete dividend where they're actually trying to say, where they're actually trying to mention how much you're going to receive and when you're going to receive. Second type is you can have dividends being expressed in the form of percentages. Like typically how you actually see dividend yields, they're expressed in the form of percentages. And in, ca in case where dividends are expressed in the form of percentages, of course they do not have any specific time frame. The question will not state how when you're actually going to receive this dividend because that dividend yield is a basically the yield that you're or the dividend that you're going to get over a period of three months. So now let's actually start with an, a fresh example. Let's change our stock as well. I think I'm tired with taking Infosys as an example. Maybe let's take um, TCS. All right, let's take TCS as an example. Let's say the stock price of TCS, I have no idea what it is trading. Maybe let's say 2,800. This is the spot price of TCS. Let's say that the tenor of the forward contract this time is six months, all right? So I'm taking T as equal to six months, all right? When I'm saying the tenor of the forward contract, what I'm essentially trying to say is you have the contract or the, you have the obligation to buy or sell the asset, sell the underlying, which is TCS, after a period of six months, all right? And let us say, we're now taking an example of discrete dividends. Let us say the dividend that we are going to receive is rupees 20 at t equal to 4, all right? So the, I'm standing at t equal to 0. With the forward contract is going to mature at t equal to 6, and I have a discrete dividend of rupees 20 at t equal to 4. Now, if I actually ask you to price the forward contract, how are we going to do it? Now, remember, also I need the risk-free interest rate. Let me just put it risk-free interest rate, let us say it is 5% per annum. Again, this I'm assuming it to be effective. All right. So now we, are, we have to price this forward contract. Had this information of dividend not been there in the question, then the price of the forward contract would have been very simple. It would have just been 2,800 into 1.05 whole power 6 by 12. That is the price of the forward contract, assuming no dividends. I'm just repeating myself. If you are assuming that, the, if for a second, if we are assuming that this information on dividend is not provided in the question, then the price of the forward contract is nothing but the spot price multiplied by one plus RF whole power T, which is nothing but 2,800 into 1.05 whole power six by 12, all right? But now over here, we have a new information given in the form of dividend which is going to be received at, at t equal to 4 and the amount of dividend is actually rupees 20. Now we're again going to have the same process that we actually did for determination of forward price when there was no dividend. Let's say I want the share in my hand at t equal to 6. Okay, if I want the share in my hand at t equal to 6, there are two, there are two ways I can actually achieve that. Buy the share today Our second alternative is where I actually buy six month forward contract. If I want the share in my hand at the end of six months, then there are two possibilities. One, I buy the share today and I hold it for a period of six months. Or, or second alternative is I buy the six month forward contract. And the principle of no arbitrage says that when you have the same destination, both the routes must have the same cost. 
Therefore, the cost under root one is supposed to be equal to cost under root two, where root one is nothing but buying the share today and holding it for a period of six months, and root two is where you are buying the six month forward contract itself. All right. Now, if you actually see, if you are buying the share today, you are going to incur borrowing costs or you are going to incur the spot price today. You pay spot price today of rupees 2800. T equal to zero. So obviously you have to compound this for a period of six months. But when you buy the share today, you're also going to receive dividend at T equal to four. You're going to receive dividend at T equal to four of rupees 20. Was 20 the value that I took? Yeah. All right. So there are two cash flows. But if you buy the share today, first cash flow being you incur 2,800 today. The second cash flow being there is a cash inflow of rupees 20 at t equal to 4. If you buy the six month forward contract, you have to pay the forward price at t equal to 6. That's the only cash flow. You have to pay forward price at t equal to 6. And remember, this forward price is going to be fixed, and you have to pay this amount irrespective of what the share price is at t equal to 6. All right, so let us denote this as f. So now, obviously, what we are trying to say is the cost under root one is supposed to be equal to the cost under root two. And therefore, we are going to equate both of this. And we are actually going to write that F is equal to 2800 into 1.05 whole power 6 by 12. Obviously, I need to do compounding because the 2800 is actually a cash outflow today, whereas F is actually a cash outflow at t equal to 6. Therefore, I am supposed to do compounding, but I am also going to receive dividend and therefore I am reducing it. I am reducing rupees 20, but this 20 is not a cash inflow at t equal to 6. This 20 is a cash inflow at t equal to 4. And therefore, we have 20 also being multiplied by 1.05 whole power 2 by 12. Reason being, I am going to compound this 20 only for a period of two months because I'm receiving it at the end of fourth month. All right, if I'm receiving any dividend at the end of the fourth month, I'm only going to compound it for a period of two months so as to bring it to t equal to six. Remember, this f is actually this f is actually a cash outflow at t equal to six, but is being determined today. Okay, this cash, this F, the, the forward price that we are actually calculating is a cash outflow at t equal to six, but just that it's being determined or if you're being, it's being measured today. Just because it's being measured today does not mean you actually have to pay the cash out, pay the forward price today itself. You are supposed to pay the forward price at t equal to six upon maturity of the forward contract. And if you actually calculate this, this is nothing but The first component is 2869. Again, the CA final students don't have to really worry because this 1.05 whole power 6 by 12 will be given in the question. The second component is basically 20.1633. The sum is 2849, all right, approximately. Okay, so the forward price is actually 2,849. So if you actually carefully revisit the formula, what we have actually done is forward price is equal to S into one plus RF whole power T minus the future value of dividend. The future value of dividend is what we have actually done. This FV, please do not consider it to be face value. It is the future value of dividend. I'll just clarify that as well. Okay, future of FV over here is future value. So just very quickly revisiting it. What we are trying to say is if I want a share in my hand at the end of sixth month, then there are two alternatives through which I can actually achieve that. First alternative is where I buy the share today itself and hold it for a period of six months. The second alternative is where I'm buying a six month forward contract. Now, if I buy the share today, then I incur a cash outflow of 2,800 at t equal to zero. And I also receive a dividend of rupees 20 at t equal to four. 
All right. This is the cash inflow and outflow at T uh, under alternative one. Under alternative two, the cash inflow or outflow is only just the forward price. The forward price is actually the cash outflow, and you have to actually pay this at T equal to six. All right. We are denoting the forward price as F, and what we are trying to say is the right hand side should be equal to the left hand side. Otherwise, there would actually be an arbitrage opportunity. All right. So as to prevent any arbitrage, the right hand side should actually be equal to the left hand side. Now this F is standing at t equal to six, and obviously, therefore, we have to take all the cash flows to at t equal to six itself, and therefore, we are doing two thousand eight hundred, and we're compounding it for a period of six months, and then we are reducing this by the cash inflow that we are going to receive at t equal to four. Obviously, when I'm investing two thousand eight hundred and I'm receiving dividend, it basically means that my net cost is actually reducing, right? So that reduction is being uh, captured through the form of reducing the future value of dividend in this transaction. All right. So F is equal to spot price multiplied by one plus R F whole power T minus the future value of the dividends that we are actually going to receive. All right. So this is the formula for the price of the forward contract where you have discrete dividends. There's also an alternative formula through which you can actually calculate this. Just that we are going to do some mathematical uh, tweaks to the same equation. It's not that it's going to be a completely different equation. But that equation I will be discussing in the next lecture. That's it for this lecture, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.